Hello, and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we're he we'll hear from Ban Useful Jenkins. But first, joining me now is our guest, Prairie Public's friend and author, Shirbanu Aziz. And uh, you're here to talk about your cookbook, and that's your cookbook, Shirbanu's Indian Cuisine. Now, That's right. Uh, uh, you know, it said here a new cookbook, but technically it's got new recipes, but it's actually now in its third edition. That's correct. Okay, so let's do that. But before we do that, tell the folks a little bit about yourself and your background and where you're originally from. I'm originally from India. I was born in Mumbai, and I grew up in Chennai, which is on the East Coast. Mumbai is on the West Coast. And I came to United States in 1973 with my three little sons. And of course, the only thing I knew was the Indian food, the Indian clothing, and my sons just loved that food. They just did not know how to eat sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And so I kept on cooking, and I, it took me a long time to learn to cook uh, without any help. In India, I had a lot of help, you know, uh, because there's a lot of population, so there's always someone to come and help you, or the families live together. So that was very nice. When I first came here, I lived in Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, and I worked at the World Bank there, and then at the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and then I moved here because my son's family was here, and my only grandchild, his daughter, was here. So I wanted to spend time with them. Mm -hmm. So I moved here, and I just love it here. Well, now, what got you interested in cooking, or was it something you did as a small girl growing up did, were you learning to cook? You know, as I stated in my book, I didn't want to do cooking. I wanted to go out and work. Mm -hmm. But born in a Muslim family, you should know that in, I belong to a different generation where women were not allowed to go out and work. It was just that my father had a nervous breakdown. He lost his business in the Second World War, and I got an opportunity to go out and make a living. And that has helped me a lot. And so when I was growing up from the age of 13, I grew up watching mother and my older sisters cooking, but I really didn't like it. And what I would do is I would do the, if we were going to have guests or something, I would do the cleaning and I would uh, do the decorating of the dessert. And that's what I used to do. And it was not until actually after I got married, even then I had a mother-in-law who was a very good cook. So I didn't have to cook a whole lot until I came to United States. And that's when I really, really learned to cook. And it was so much easier cooking here because we get frozen things, we get things all cleaned and cut and all that thing. That was not possible in India. So that encouraged me. Besides, my sons wouldn't eat anything else. Even a pizza was terrible. Mm -hmm. Now they can't live off pizza, you know. <laughs> well, what is it about Indian food that people enjoy and Amer Americans seem to love so much? Oh, it's the flavor, it's mm -hmm. the taste. When you fry the spices, a lot of the Western food, the spices are not cooked, but we fry the spices along with ginger, garlic, and onion. If you are ever there, when Creative Kitchen had me there, and I started frying those things to make the fillings in the samosa, oh, there was a long line there. Well, let's talk a little bit about your cookbook. Uh, who, who is the cookbook geared for? The, my goal ever since I came here to the United States was to get people to know what India is, what Indians are, what Indian culture, tradition, and cuisine is. And I found that cuisine is something that people gear towards right away. And that's why I started cooking. Besides, you know, in offices or anywhere you have parties at Christmas or other times, for potluck I would take my dishes and people just loved it. And so that's how it grew into writing a book because people kept asking me for recipes. I didn't grow up with recipes. We didn't have recipes in those days. Mother would say, put so much of something and this much of something else. And that's how we measured things. So I, when I came here, I met the late Andrea Hell Grimson. Uh, she used to be the food writer column and forum. And she helped me write the recipes. She helped me how to write them. She helped me how to present them in a book. And she was my first editor. And the book became very popular. The first 2,000 books, 
in 2001 sold out in a year's time. I didn't expect them to, you know. And so then I, at the same time, I met a former Peace Corps volunteer, uh, Patty Roach Kraski, who was a nutritionist in uh, India and Pakistan uh, during the, her Peace Corps tour. And she helped me put the nutritional values to my recipes. And as far as I know, there is no other Indian cookbook that has nutritional values as far as I know. And then my goal was to make the recipes as simple as possible and as easy as possible to prepare them in the house. So that's why I wrote the cookbook. And I, the, in the third edition, I made them even simpler because after a lot of exper experience cooking them, I found that taking the shortcuts does not compromise the taste or flavor of the dishes. Mm. Well, can, well, you said 2001, 2002 were the first two printing. So it's been out of print. You brought it back in 2014 with new recipes and, and some uh, new additions to it. That's right. The reason being, uh, a little while the second edition was being sold and a little after that, um, I had a snag in health because of side effects of a medication. So for three years, it was very difficult to do anything. So I was just taking it easy at that time. I couldn't because when I had the book, I used to do teaching classes. I used to do uh, costume, re uh, costume parties and food parties. It was so much fun. And so I couldn't do it for a while, but people kept asking and asking for the books. So now that I'm healthy, I decided, well, let me try again. So I only printed 200 copies, and they'll be gone this weekend. Yeah, but you're going to print some more, I understand. Yes. Can, can you talk about some of your fav favorite recipes in the book? My favorite recipe is one is this samosas, which is a vegetable turnover. There is also meat turnover recipes in the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are very, very popular, very popular, because everybody likes fried stuff. And the spices in that are very, very, very different. They are whole spices, and they are very good flavor. And the filling in this is with potatoes and vegetables, and the, the wrapping, it wrapped up, and then deep fried. Okay. Well, you said you came to the United States in, in 1973. That's correct. Did your cooking habits change any uh, slightly? Uh, oh yes, they have changed a lot. In India, we didn't have a, and I'm talking about my generation, okay? We didn't have uh, ovens in the house. This may sound strange to you. If, if, have you been to India? I have not. Okay, it, it, those days, people, uh, middle class families didn't have oven. Even uh, upper class did not have ovens. Uh, we used to use charcoal underneath and charcoal on the top and on the stove, and that's how they used to make things. I did not know how to bake. I did not know to make a lot of things, which I do now. I even bought a bread making machine, you know, and I just love to bake bread at home. So a lot of things have changed, but I still make Indian food. Okay. Well, you mentioned some of these things, and I understand you brought some things for me to try. Yes, well, I would love you to try them. You, you explained these a little bit, but just uh, again, tell us what, what this is right here. These are samosas. This is an appetizer, and uh, this is, and for dip, we call it chutney. This is a new recipe in there, which is called apple chutney. Uh, so, and people love it. It's got uh, ginger in it and uh, uh, raisins. And you will like it. Would you like to taste well, I, it? I, I'm, I'm going to try it right here on the air now. What, what can I expect when I bite into this here? You expect to find some potatoes inside, peas, carrots, and that. And you just and you've put got it on here like that's this. right. And just you will be all right. <laughs> you will love it. Hmm. Oh, it's very good. Well, thank you. Very good. Thank you. Save the others for after the crew don't get it. They doesn't. They did not get. They don't get any. So, hmm. Now you've got various chapters in the book. Can we talk about the different chapters? I would love to. But let's start with chapter one: the right. herbs and spices. That's right. Well, this is another thing. When I came to the West, well, first let me confess that I never went to school for cooking. I learned cooking by observation in mother's kitchen and helping mother and my older sisters, and then uh, my mother-in-law later on. So I learned by being with people. 
And as a result, I did not quite know the difference between herbs and spices. We called everything spices. But I, loved, I went through the uh, random dictionary and found that anything that grows with the roots, it's called the herbs. And the other things are called spices that grows on top of it, like chilies, uh, cumin, corianders, those are spices. But the leafy things are called herbs, like cilantro and uh, mace and those things. Okay. So those are the differences. But then I talk about uh, ginger and garlic, we, which we use a lot. Uh, red chilies, there are about, did you know that there are 500 different types of chili peppers in mm -hmm. this world? Well, that's what I found out. I was flabbergasted. I thought there were only two, the chilies that I used and jalapeno. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. well, I noticed there, there's just, there was just a little warmth in it. Yes. Like, yeah, in, in what I just, just tried. So, well, that's you know. about the Indian food that people like. Mm -hmm. Did when you I, like that? I did, and, I, okay. and I'm, I'm going to have... But then you brought me uh, what, what you said, uh, a dessert. A dessert. It is similar to uh, rice pudding, mm -hmm. and we call it kheer. It's, it's, it's a similar thing. The only thing is some of the uh, spices that I use. Here they use a lot of cinnamon, mm -hmm. and I use cardamom and nutmeg and uh, pistachios and um, almonds. Okay. Well... While I taste this, please do tell me about your 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 next chapter with uh, the uh, chutney, achar, and uh, salad. Yes. Okay. Chutney is what in America normally is called a dip. Those are normally created fresh every day. Although nowadays you get them on the in the market because they put preservatives. But when I was growing up, those were every day made at home fresh mm -hmm. chutneys. Achar is is pickles really, but they're not like what American pickles are. These are any of the vegetables like uh, lime, lemon, uh, green mangoes, or any other vegetables which are uh, with a lot of spices and steeped in oil is achar. And then the other things, what we have, the salads and raita are because of the Temperature. How did you like the dessert? Well, it was very good, but I just want to make sure <laughs> make sure I'm presentable for television here. I, well, I mean, yeah. Okay, uh, the the salads and raita are the dessert, are, are the salads, which are steeped in yogurt, because there the green things wilt very quickly because the the weather is so hot. You know, mm -hmm. it's tropical or equatorial weather, so most of the salads are deep. So, Salads and raita are those ways. Salads, in, salads are one kind, and raita is normally a lot of yogurt with uh, cucumbers. Okay. Well, we're going right through your book here. Uh, we'll talk about your uh, hors d'oeuvres and appetizers. Yes, hors d'oeuvres are one is the samosas. Mm -hmm. Then there is another one very commonly used in India is the chickpea flour which is the chickpea, like the uh, garbanzo beans, but mm -hmm. before that, the lentils, before they get into the big beans, uh, th that those are made into, those are ground and made into flour, and they're made pakoras, they're like uh, dumplings. And that, that is something everybody just loves. Again, uh, I make that like you make the, for any dumpling flour, mm -hmm. a batter, and then add spices. We add spices to everything, just like people add sugar here for everything. We add spices to everything. Well, spices add a lot of flavor to That's probably why people like it so much. Talk about your vegetarian dishes. Okay, in India we don't call like meat dishes and vegetables. We call vegetarians because mostly 75 percent people I think are vegetarians. All the things are changing now in big cities. Uh, part of the reason is due to religious tradition, cultural taboos. Many remain vegetarians, and the vegetarians just do. Some vegetarians even avoid eggs, although milk and yogurt remains a staple of vegetarians. They won't even eat fish. On the other hand, there are some uh, in Calcutta side in Bengal where they eat um, fish, and yet they are vegetarians. So those who are veg who eat meat are called non-vegetarians, and they will eat all the meat that's available, red as well as poultry. Mm -hmm. And among the poultry, mostly we have chicken. Uh, turkey doesn't, I think it's not con 
conducive for the, the weather there for the turkey. Uh, partridges are sometimes found in some parts of India. Okay. Well, you have, other, you have seafood and breads and for a first course and sweet meats. I mean, what has been the reaction to your book over the years? Well, it has been very positive. I've done cooking classing, teaching parties where people would invite me and their friends and I would teach them how to make some dishes and everybody would participate and they just loved it. There hasn't been one place which was a failure where people said, oh, it was, we wish you had not invited her. <laughs> and I could tell you lots and lots of stories of the wonderful people I have met all over. I was on the radio, uh, North Dakota Public Radio, and somebody heard me from Bismarck, and he sent me an email to say, tell me that I should come and do a surprise party for their anniversary. Mm. And I can tell you lots of stories. So I've had lots of fun and really enjoyed it. Are there any good uh, Indian restaurants that you would recommend in our region? Yes, right now we have only two that I'm aware of. There were three, but that closed down, the one on university. But there is one on um, 45th Street and 7th Avenue, uh, which is uh, Passage of India. Mm -hmm. And it's very good. Both of them are very good. And the second one is Pal India Palace, which is on 13th Avenue, way down near uh, Goldman. Okay. And both are very, very good. They both have buffet on, uh, in the afternoons. And so if you want to try, you can always try the buffet. And if, if something you don't like, you put aside. Yeah. Well, and both of these restaurants are in Fargo. Both are you, in Fargo. Yeah. In fact, I'm told that there is one coming in Center Mall in Moorhead. I'm very excited because I live very near there. Mm -hmm. Well, we're running out of time, but something I found interesting, not only uh, are you an author and a cook, but you're a painter as well. I do painting. I, I have started having severe hearing loss since 2002, but it was much less. By the time it was 2004, it was really bad. And then I met somebody who recommended I join the class of painters at Yumcom Center, and that's where I, we meet every Thursday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I, had a sh I participated in many shows, and this is the one that was in uh, Bismarck, and I'm very proud that I was awarded the North Dakota's First Ladies Award I got on this one. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very nice. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, so. Well, t tell us a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, can go back to your cookbook, because it's interesting that uh, you write the cookbook, you became a painter, and, and uh, now a renowned painter, I guess, uh, with award winning. Uh, can anyone cook the recipes in your cookbook? Yes. What I have tried to do is 99% of the recipes. You can cook with the spices or uh, vegetables or meat that you get in a regular grocery store. Cashwise, Hornbarkers, Family Fair, anywhere. There are only about three recipes for which you need uh, packaged uh, spices. And those are available at the Asian, uh, American Asian store. And there are like four or five specialty store, Indian grocery stores now in Fargo. There are none in Moorhead yet. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you talked about breads. And yes. Can you talk about the, the breads of, of the Indian subcontinent? Yes. You know, we, they're more like tortillas. They're all flat breads. You, you probably heard about naan. Everybody talks about naan. And it's now available even at Hornbarkers, the naans they sell them, which are made in an oven. Uh, you know, clay oven. It seems like uh, food can tie cultures together. I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you. Well, if people want to uh, find out more information about your book, where can they find it? These are available at Creative Kitchen, at uh, Sweet Dreams, at uh, uh, Zambro's, at Tochi's, and at the gift shop at uh, Yumkamp Center. Okay. And there are other uh, outlets that I'm going to talk about later. I'm going to work on uh, later. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, John. Stay tuned for more. Useful Jenkins, a band from Mankato, Minnesota, introduces a modern, edgy interpretation of bluegrass to their original music. 
The lyrics are socially relevant and combined with a unique instrumental arrangements, which makes for a wonderful listening experience. When it all just up and changed You see the world around is crumbling It's going through the motions Never seem to be deranged Until the thread on the wires coils up again We can't slow down And we can't bump the brakes Girls are locking up on me Out there for everyone to see Together we can navigate The seep is great And how you play with Momentum building now Moments from building Sometimes it's far too dark to see like a blank pulling over me When it's time to pay the fiddler, I will greet him happily Cause I've seen sunny days and seen the darkest shades of grey Nothing can contend with what she's given to me The path you choose to take and all the loving that you make Build you up or bury you six feet in the ground Cause home is what you make it As long as you can take it Home to me is where she can be found So fill me to the brim Because contentment is a sin I'll drink down and fill it up again I push my worries to the side To happy tears to satisfy the hunger Let I feel thin Fill me to the breaking point where nothing can contain All this pressure that's building pain When my mouth is dry, I can't rely on you to fill me up Fill me up Satisfy the hunger that I feel thin Fill me to the breaking point where nothing can contain All this pressure that has filled the veins When my mouth is dry, I can't rely on you to fill me up Seem to be deranged Until the thread unwinds Coils up again We can't slow down And we can't bump the brakes 
girls are locking up on me. I never ever want to see. Together we can navigate the steepest grade and hide your play with momentum building. Nah, momentum building. Momentum building. A momentum building. Momentum building. A momentum building. Momentum building. Momentum building. Momentum building. A momentum building. Well, that's all we have on Prairie Pulse this week. And as always, thanks for watching. Funding for Minnesota Legacy Programs are provided by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public.